More RTX cards are going to be releasing soon. What? Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So there's been a lot of leaks recently about the RTX 3060, 3050, and potential 3050 Ti, and I think this all started with the leak back in November, which came from leaker copite 7 kimi over on Twitter, which by the way, there will be links to all my sources in the description below, but in that leak he had this to say, quote, ah, the desktop cards based on GA106 will be called RTX 3060 with 3840 FP32 cores, and RTX 3050 Ti with 3584 FP32 cores. I don't know if it will change in the future. Future. Then he said, really, RTX 3060 will get 12 gigabytes GDDR6 and RTX 3050 Ti will get 6 gigabytes. Then the next bit of news came from videocards.com recently where they posted an article stating that apparently the RTX 3080 Ti, uh, 3070 Ti, 3060, and 3050 would all be launching in January. And according to them, quote, NVIDIA RTX 3060 is expected to launch in two variants. The 12 gigabyte model should feature 3840 CUDA cores, while the RTX 3060 gigabyte is rumored to offer 3,584 CUDA cores, so that kind of lines up with that previous leak from Copite 7 Kimi where apparently one was going to have 3,840 and the other was going to have 3,584. Now the only difference between these two leaks is that apparently now, according to videocards.com, the RTX 3050 Ti is going to be just called another RTX 3060, and I'm not entirely sure whether or not that'll be the case, it might just be called a 3050 Ti after all, but it does look like these two leaks are starting to line up. And then finally we had one more leak recently where, according According to Laptop Video To Go, there is apparently some HP OEM drivers listed with some device IDs that were translated a few of them into being GA106 cards, which should be the RTX 3060 and potentially 3050 Ti, as well as a 3060 mobile card and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. So, you know, when we take all these leaks into account, it does look like these cards will be launching very soon. They're all but confirmed at this point, and they're probably going to be pretty powerful. And speaking of powerful, let's go ahead and take a look at what those specs should be. So starting off the RTX 3060, it should be based on the GA106-300 GPU. It should have 3,840 CUDA cores. It should have between 6 and 12 gigabytes of VRAM, depending on which model you buy. And it should be running at 14 gigabits per second on a 192-bit bus for a total bandwidth of 336 gigabytes per second. Now looking at a potential RTX 3050 Ti, this should also be based off of the GA106 die. It should have 3,584 CUDA cores, likely only 6 gigabytes of memory, running at 14 gigabits per second on a 100 192-bit bus for the same 336 gigabytes per second. Now taking a look at the RTX 3050, this one should be based off of the GA107 GPU. It should have somewhere around 2560 CUDA cores, and it should have either 4 or 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Now I'm not entirely sure on this one, and video cards does seem to think that it's going to be 4 gigabytes of VRAM, but I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up with 8 gigabytes as an option as well. Now that memory will also likely be running at 14 gigabits per second on a 128-bit bus for a total bandwidth of 224 gigabytes per second. And those specs do sound pretty impressive considering that these are kind of entry to mid-range GPUs, but you know, how are they going to perform? And here's where I'm thinking they're likely going to be sitting in the stack. Now, if we compare them to the 20 series cards, I would assume that the RTX 3060 should be somewhere around the performance of a RTX 2070 Super, the RTX 3050 Ti, or the cut down 3060, whatever they end up calling it, should be, you know, a little bit faster than the RTX 2070, but not probably not by too much. And then the RTX 3050 should be probably a little bit faster than an RTX 2060. So that is pretty good as long as we do end up getting those decent VRAM counts because, you know, if we end up with a 3060 that only has 6 gigabytes of VRAM and a 3050 with only 4 gigabytes of VRAM, well, that's going to start to really hurt a few years down the line. And a lot of people who go out and buy entry to mid-range GPUs do want to hang on to their GPUs for some time. I mean, it might be, you know, 2, 3, 4 generations before you upgrade again. So getting a card with only 4 gigabytes of VRAM or even 6 gigabytes of VRAM would be a real shame. So if you are going to go out and get these GPUs and they do have an option to get, you know, 12 or 8 gigabytes, definitely go and get those cards instead. I know it, it might be a little bit of a stretch for your budget, but trust me, if you're going to be hanging on to these GPUs for a while, you're definitely going to appreciate the fact that you went for that higher VRAM count. Otherwise, you're going to end up seeing some pretty severe performance drops, especially with a 4 gigabyte card going forward into the future, or you're just going to have to reduce a lot of those settings pretty heavily. It's okay, baby. 8 gigabytes is enough. I didn't mean it.
Now, there's one more thing I want to mention real quick here before I wrap this video up, and that's that over on Twitter as well as YouTube, Hardware and Box posted a statement saying that they're supposedly having a little bit of trouble with NVIDIA right now, and it might be questionable whether or not they're going to be able to get some reference cards going forward into the future. And, you know, I think that's a real shame, and I just want to say I 100% stand with Hardware and Box. I think they do absolutely fantastic reviews, and you know what? I'm pretty confident that they will get this worked out. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think about the RTX 3060, 3050 Ti, and 3050R? Are you looking forward to these cards or are you going to be looking to AMD as an alternative? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.